Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless jesus said as a sign of his coming and the end of the age there would be an increase in deception false christ who will deceive many wars and rumors of wars nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom famines pestilences earthquakes christian persecution apostasy false prophets and lawlessness causing the love of many to grow cold jesus said all of these signs would come like birth pains jesus was likening last day's events to a woman in labor as the labor progresses the pains increase in both frequency and intensity until the baby finally comes as we get closer to jesus return all the signs he gave us as a sign of his coming and the end of the age will become more frequent and more intense all of these signs are manifesting around the world in our time John 15:18 through 20 If the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love its own. Yet because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Remember the word that I said to you, a servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. A Christian school is suing school officials. It says its school teams were banned from participating in future sports tournaments after a girls basketball team refused to compete in a game against a biological male. The lawsuit says the Vermont Principals Association won't even allow the school and its students to participate in co-ed academic competitions like the GOB, Science and Math Fair, and Debate and Forensic League, all because the school believes biological boys are boys and cannot affirm otherwise. Tommy, what do you think about this? Besides the fact that it's completely ridiculous this happened in the first place, I'm really happy to see this Christian school standing up and fighting back. It's about time we have not only parents banding together, but schools and schools officials banding together. But let's also go back to this original situation here, not competing against a team that had a transgender athlete. That's not only an issue of fairness, Carly, that's an issue of safety. We have seen athletes that are transgender competing against female, biological female athletes being hurt on more than one occasion. So this is not only, again, an issue of fairness and competition in sport, this is a safety issue. And the fact that, that now there are students that just want to compete, there are students that want to compete in academic competitions, there are students that want to compete in any type of competition at that level to be able to get, I don't know, academic scholarships or to receive accomplishments, to participate in extracurricular activities, being stripped away from them so that that district can send a virtue signal that is essentially worthless. I'm glad the school is fighting back. And we also have to remember that if schools would band together and if parents and students would band together, then they would have the louder voice in this because they are the majority made to feel like they're the minority. It's time to stand up and see you've got an army behind you. Remember to pray for our persecuted brothers and sisters in Christ. Remember the prisoners as if chained with them, those who are mistreated, since you yourselves are in the body also. Hebrews 13.3 1 Corinthians 12.26 And if one member suffers, all the members suffer with it. Or if one member is honored, all the members rejoice with it. Matthew 5.10-12 Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you, and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven, for so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. 1 Corinthians 16.13 Watch, stand fast in the faith, be brave, be strong. Oh, does this sound fair? A biological male swimmer shattering a New Jersey college record, but only after switching from the men's team to the women's. Megan Cortez Field swam on Ramapo, Ramapo College men's team for three years before moving to the girls' team this season as a senior. The school's swim team recently congratulating the transgender athlete on social media for breaking the school record in the 100-yard butterfly but later deleted the post, citing the need to, quote, protect their teammate from insulting comments. Hmm. Deuteronomy 22.5 A woman shall not wear anything that pertains to a man, nor shall a man put on a woman's garment, for all who do so are an abomination to the Lord your God. 
In the meantime, we're going to turn our attention to this. A transgender college swimmer in New Jersey is making some waves today. This after breaking her school's record after transferring from the men's team over to the women's. Megan Cortez Field smashed Ramapo College's 100-yard butterfly record on Saturday. She's now facing backlash, fierce backlash from some critics. This includes Riley Gaines, who joins us now. You told Fox News earlier, quote, those who choose to remain blind to the injustice of allowing mediocre male athletes to become record-breaking female athletes are either incompetent or misogynists. Women are being asked to smile and step aside and allow these men onto our teams, all the while stripping us of opportunities, privacy, and safety. Well, I, I mentioned that about the first piece, about either being a misogynist or incompetent, because the evidence is there. This is really this issue, this gender ideology movement, it's really only adversely affecting, as it pertains to sports at least, it's only adversely affecting women. We don't see biological women, which I, I want to be clear, I hate using that word. We don't see females mm -hmm. going into men's sports and becoming record smashers. Uh, this is only going one way. That's what I mean by that. And, and the other part of that statement was speaking from direct experience, uh, my real life lived experience, because we were asked to smile. We were told we were the problem if we felt uncomfortable undressing next to a male. We were told we needed to be kind. We needed to be inclusive. We needed to apologize uh, if we didn't feel like it was fair or just to allow men to take our spots on the podium. This is the performance record of Megan Cortez Fields. She set a record in her division. First place in the 100-yard butterfly, coming in at 57 Point two two second uh, place finish in the 200 yard individual medley at two minutes and 12 seconds. Like Leah Thomas, she is a full head taller than her teammates, and, and clearly this is a transition that happened after puberty. Uh, this swimmer was swimming uh, with with the males. Uh, and was sort of like Leah Thomas, mediocre in competition, then gets into the women's category and starts blowing records away. You're exactly right. Uh, as a swimmer myself, I can attest to these times and what they mean. 57 seconds in a 100-yard butterfly for the men is um, atrocious, <laughs> for lack of a better <laughs> word. Uh, that, that's not competitive by any means. This is Leah Thomas 2.0, I think we could say, and it's not the last time this is going to happen. No, and it's not even the only time. This has happened at Roanoke College. Now we're seeing it, of course, in New Jersey. Uh, there are other instances around the country. I mean, look at Massachusetts, for example, where mm -hmm. a young woman's safety was jeopardized. She had her teeth knocked out, had to undergo yeah. facial reconstruction surgery because of a male athlete playing on the women's team. Same thing with um, high school volleyball player Peyton McNabb. A year and three months since she was spiked in the face by a male player posing as a woman, she's still partially paralyzed on her right side and has vision impairment and has to have special accommodations for testing at school and isn't playing college sports like she thought she was going to, like she had planned for herself. That's why this matters, because in the name of inclusivity, we are excluding female athletes, which is everything that Title IX was passed to prevent from happening. We now live in an Isaiah 520 world where evil is good and good is evil, where the sin of being a homosexual or transgender is openly celebrated and even glorified. One of the many signs that we are living in the end times is the epidemic of homosexuality that is sweeping the world today. Jesus said he would return at a time when society parallels the days of Lot, as we read in Luke 17, 28 through 30. Likewise, as it was also in the days of Lot, they ate, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built. But on the day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even so will it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. To find out what parallels our days with the days of Lot, we need to go back to the book of Genesis. Genesis 19, 1 through 5. Now the two angels came to Sodom in the evening, and Lot was sitting in the gate of Sodom. When Lot saw them, he rose to meet them, and he bowed himself with his face toward the ground, and said, My lords, please turn aside to your servant's house and spend the night and wash your feet. Then you may rise up early and go on your way. They said, No, we will spend the night in the town square. But he pressed them strongly, so they turned aside to him and entered his house. And he made them a feast, and baked unleavened bread, and they ate. But before they lay down, the men of the city, the men of Sodom, both young and old, all the people to the last man, surrounded the house. And they called to Lot, Where are the men who came to you tonight? Bring them out to us, that we may know them. The term know them isn't a friendly handshake and how are you. It is to know them in a sexual way. What parallels our days with the days of Lot is homosexuality.
Just as in the days of Lot, not only is homosexuality widely accepted today, but it's being taught to our kids, just like in Sodom, as we read in verse 4. The men of the city, the men of Sodom, both young and old, all the people to the last man, surrounded the house. There are many people within the church who are teaching that homosexuality is not a sin, when scripture clearly says it is. This is another sign Jesus gave to look for prior to his second coming, as we read in Matthew 24, 11. Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. Homosexuality is strongly condemned in the Bible. Ezekiel 16, 49-50 Look, this was the iniquity of your sister Sodom. She and her daughter had pride, fullness of food, and an abundance of idleness. Neither did she strengthen the hand of the poor and needy, and they were haughty and committed abomination before me. Therefore I took them away as I saw fit. What was this prideful abomination committed before God? The answer is found in the book of Leviticus. Leviticus 18.22 You shall not lie with a male as with a woman. It is an abomination. Leviticus 20.13 If a man lies with a male as he lies with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination. They shall surely be put to death. Their blood shall be upon them. God gives mankind a dire warning for the acts of homosexuality in 2 Peter 2.6 and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemn them to destruction, making them an example to those who afterward would live ungodly. God also offers forgiveness to those who are living a life of homosexuality as we read in 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 11. Or do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor homosexuals, nor thieves, nor the covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor swindlers, will inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but you were washed, but you were sanctified, but you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. Matthew 24:11. Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. False prophet is the Greek word pseudo-prophetes, which means a pretended foreteller or religious imposter. A false prophet is a person who spreads false teachings or messages while claiming to speak the word of God. Rather than speak the word of the Lord, false prophets deliver messages that originate in their own hearts, as we read in Jeremiah 23, 16. Thus says the Lord of hosts, Do not listen to the words of the prophets who prophesy to you. They make you worthless. They speak a vision of their own heart, not from the mouth of the Lord. In the New Testament, Jesus warns his followers about false prophets, as we read in Matthew 7, 15 through 20. Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. You will know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Even so, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Therefore, by their fruits you will know them. Jesus then gives a dire warning to false prophets, as we read in Matthew 7, 21-23. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you, depart from me. You who practice lawlessness. Tonight, dozens of churches, United Methodist churches nationwide, are disaffiliating, divided on issues involving human sexuality, including same sex marriage. And Tampa Bay Shannon Close spoke to one local pastor in St. Petersburg who explains why his church is staying. Allendale is a United Methodist Church that is committed to doing the work of anti-racism and loving and affirming uh, LGBTQ people, standing in solidarity with those who are being marginalized. That's why Reverend Andy Oliver at Allendale United Methodist Church proudly performs same-sex marriages. We proudly do so because it's the, it's the right thing to do. In the past week, 55 Florida United Methodist Churches disaffiliated. Six of those are right here in the Tampa Bay area. The Florida Conference of the United Methodist Church states 55 churches disaffiliated, citing paragraph 2553 in the Book of Discipline. This outlines two issues, same-sex marriage and a pastor's sexuality. I just want to make sure that trans and LGBTQ larger community knows that they are loved uh, and affirmed. 
uh, by this pastor and by this church. Those who disaffiliate will have to pay certain costs, including unpaid bills and insurance. If they fulfill their financial responsibility, they can leave and keep the property. The split in the church and new Florida laws have some parishioners afraid. We've had a few families already leave the state um, because they did not feel safe here. For that reason, Reverend Oliver says his church isn't going anywhere, standing strong in a denomination that's divided. My job as a pastor and our job as a church is to stand in solidarity with those that are hurting. As a sign of his coming and the end of the age, Jesus said there would be a falling away from the Christian faith and false teachers would rise up as we read in Matthew 24, 10 and 11. And then many will fall away and betray one another and hate one another. And many false prophets will arise and lead many astray. The Bible tells us these false prophets will twist God's word as we read in 2 Peter 3, 15 and 16. And consider that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation as also our beloved brother Paul according to the wisdom given to him, as written to you, as also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, and which are some things hard to understand, which untaught and unstable people twist to their own destruction, as they do also the rest of the scriptures. The Bible goes on to tell us that these false teachers are Satan's servants, as we read in 2 Corinthians 11, 14, and 15. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into apostles of Christ. And no wonder, for even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. So it is no surprise if his servants also disguise themselves as servants of righteousness. Their end will correspond to their deeds. The last days church will not follow the truth in the Bible. They will find false teachers to tell them their sin is okay. And not just that it is okay, but it is biblical, as we read in 2 Timothy 4, 3 and 4. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but wanting to have their ears tickled, they will accumulate for themselves teachers in accordance to their own desires, and will turn away their ears from the truth, and will turn aside to myths. This is what last day's Christianity looks like. It is a Christianity that says there are many paths to heaven. When the Bible clearly says, Jesus Christ is the only way, it is a Christianity that approves of homosexuality, fornication. If you are having sex, and you are not married, it's not called dating, it's called fornication. And abortion, even though God says these things are sin, it is a Christianity that in its church services look just like the world. Jesus goes on to tell us the last day's church will be such a worldly, Christ-rejecting church that he has been thrown out, as we read in Revelation 3.14-22. And to the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things, says the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know your works, that you are neither cold nor hot. I could wish you were cold or hot. So then, because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Because you say, I am rich, have become wealthy, and have need of nothing, and do not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. I counsel you to buy from me gold, refined in the fire, that you may be rich, and white garments, that you may be clothed, that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed, and anoint your eyes with eye salve, that you may see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten, therefore be zealous and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him, and he with me. To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. In these verses of scripture, Jesus is talking about the last day's lukewarm church, a church that has one foot in the world and one foot in the church. This church is so disgustingly lukewarm that Jesus vomits it out of his mouth. Jesus counsels the last day's church to buy from him gold, which is purity, white garments, which is righteousness, and I salve, which is truth. These three things can only come from the purity, righteousness, and truth that Jesus offers through salvation in him. Jesus is now standing outside the door of the last day's Laodicean church, offering salvation to anyone who will listen. This is the grace and mercy of God. He has been kicked out of his own church, and yet still knocks and offers salvation to anyone who hears his voice and opens the door. 
I implore you today, if you are not saved, or are a lukewarm Christian, to take up Jesus' offer of salvation that can only be received through Him and only Him. John 14.6 Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now, and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive, in faith, the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in Him and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready! is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.